You can see that the GPU usage went up a little bit, having both of these open. But we still look like we're below 50% or so in the GPU usage. Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's screencast, we are going to build OpenCV for the Jetson TX2. Let's get started. We have prepared the Jetson TX2 with L4T 28.2 and CUDA 9.0 using Jetpack 3.2. Let's take a look at our build script. Build OpenCV. In the script, we define which version of OpenCV we want to build, the architecture that we want to use for a Jetson TX2, that is 6.2. If we were compiling for a TX1, that's 5.3. This line tells the system where to install OpenCV. In this case, we'll install it in slash user slash local. You should note that the stock system, Jetpack 3.2, installs OpenCV into slash user. That can lead to all sorts of issues. In the description below, there is an article discussing this a little bit more in depth. This setting here basically says if you want to install the OpenCV extras, which are, is basically the data for a lot of the OpenCV demos. This is where you define your dependencies that you want to load. In this case, we support both Python 2.7 and 3.5. So we'd load up our development environment. We add GStreamer support. And then we get to the meat and potatoes here. This is where you define your configuration parameters, basically. We tell it that we want CUDA on. We want to use fast math, QBLAS in our case. We turn on GStreamer and we add QT support for OpenGL. And then we make and install. So let's do all that. On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named Build OpenCV TX2. Let's clone this repository. Git clone. Let's switch over to that repository's directory and we will start our build process. Installation complete. Okay, now we're ready to run our examples. Let's set the desktop up. Clear this off. Before we run the samples, let's take a look at some of the options we can use to build OpenCV. We will switch over to the OpenCV directory. Let's switch over to the build directory. And then we are going to run CC make. I always forget which package that comes in. Let me take a look. Let's load that up. And let's run that. The CMake list is in the directory above this. You can see that there are 10 pages of options. These are all the default options that are chosen along with the ones that we specified. You can see that we can build the tests. You can see that part of the CMake process was it decided where the installations were for CUDA and the compilers. One thing you might want to do is install the C samples or install the Python examples. You would do that here. 
But anyway, a whole bunch of fun that you can go have on your own. We'll quit without generating. Let's start our demo. I had fired up my little Tegra stats graph program I wrote. It allows me to monitor the GPU history in a graphical manner. Let's switch back over to our examples directory. One of the things that I added to the Python canny detection script is the ability to read a USB camera. I have a USB camera mounted to the front of my monitor. Let's use that camera. We will tell it to use that device. There we are. Hello. Let me set this up. One of the things that you'll notice is that we started to use the GPU here to run this candy detection algorithm. You can see that the GPU usage is now around 35 to 40%. As you remember, the way that the candy detection algorithm works is first it converts the image to black and white, then it performs a Gaussian blur on it, and then it does the edge detection algorithm. You can see some of the challenges of doing edge detection this way. For example, if I move my head so that it blends with the background here of the wall, you can see that it doesn't detect the edge. We can change some of the parameters. So that's a little less. Let's do a little more. You can imagine that lighting conditions are pretty much an interesting part of finding the edges in an image. Pretty wrinkly. <laughs> Let's fire up the onboard camera. Open up a new terminal. We'll switch over to our example directory. If we just run canny detection without any parameters, it opens up the camera. The board is mounted on the back of a race car. So here's the back bumper. <laughs> this is pointing towards the other end of the room. Pass my hand in front of it here. Go full screen. We can cycle through the camera views. This is the RGB view. This is the candy detection view. You can see that we get pretty good edge detection on this. You can see where the chair intersects this board here. It doesn't detect the edge of the chair anymore. Where this iPad is and this monitor, you can kind of see what the lines are. You can get an idea of the edge detection capabilities here. And under these lighting conditions, we can see that it has difficulty picking out the edges of the chair against this wood background. It sees the bumper pretty well. The iPad's pretty good and the monitor is good. The fan is a little bit confusing, of course. It has those concentric rings in it. You can see that the GPU usage went up a little bit, having both of these open, but we still look like we're below 50% or so in the GPU usage. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time through, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.